blessed and be with you this evening. If you would take your Bible and be turned to the book of Daniel, chapter number 3. Book of Daniel, chapter number 3. I'd like to thank the church for having us and being good to us. And I thank you for feeding us. Amen. I like food, if you can't tell by looking at me. You might not. Uh, Mama said, don't feed him. He'll, uh, he'll keep coming back. So, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Book of Daniel, chapter number 3, we'll begin by reading verses 12 through 18. Book of Daniel, chapter number 3, and verse number 12, the Bible says, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou has set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you be ready at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sapphire, the palstry, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You may be seated. We'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity, Lord, to be back in your house tonight. God, we're thankful, uh, Lord, to preach your word one more time. And God, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, for without you, you can, we can do nothing. And God, I pray that you might touch someone's heart. Lord, I might pray that you might speak to someone here tonight. And Lord, we give it all to you. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us and use us for it. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Here in this passage of Scripture, I've... Remembered hearing this in Sunday school as a child, and it didn't mean as much to me then as it does now. It seems like the older you get, the more you live, the more the simple things, it seems like uh, it comes out to you and you appreciate them more. And here in these passages of Scripture, we find three men in a day of hardship, three men uh, that had been taken out of their home country. They were uh, taken into slavery, into Babylon, and we find that Babylon, in its definition, it means the gates of God, little g-o-d. A place of wickedness, a place of evilness, a place that they were not used to, the place that they did not want to be, but yet God took them and used them. Yet they made a stand in a foreign country and in an evil place for the Lord in the day that they were. Now these men, they had a good and a godly example, a man by the name of Daniel. Daniel was a man of prayer. He was a man uh, that loved God. And uh, May I challenge us here this evening that these three men were not old. These were three young men. These were young people. These were uh, people in their teenage to early 20, 20s. How about that? The devil tell you you're too young to serve God. That's a lie. He tell you you can't do nothing for God because of your age. That is not true. And uh, let me encourage the church if we don't do something, if we don't, if God don't send his young people, if they don't stay in the house of God, if we don't take time and spend with them, it'll just be a matter of time till the church dies. I preach at a lot of places, see a lot of places that in, you know, five, ten years, the doors are going to be shut. There's not going to be anyone to take over the church. The next generation is not there to be trained up in the way that they should go. And I know young people be aggravating. I, used to, I still am one of them. I was aggravating as I could be. I said stupid things. I did 
things I shouldn't have done, but you know what? I thank God for some people that was an example and they had patience with me and they were kind to me and they loved me and taught me the ways of the Lord even though uh, sometimes I get on their nerves. Hey Amen. Daddy always said it like this. He said, uh, young people, he said, especially young preachers, said it's like raising a gang of hunting dogs. Oh, I better get that. He said, when they're puppies, said, they'll chew the uh, strings out of your hunting boots. He said, they'll gnaw on your porch. He said, they'll cause you all kind of trouble. But said, if you spend some time with them and you train them whenever they grow up, uh, they can make something out of them. Amen. If you spend some time, if you teach them the ways that they're, what does the Bible say? Uh, train a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he shall not depart from it. Amen. Amen. Young people, will you listen to me for just a second? You've got one chance in your life to be young. You've got one chance in your life to serve God in your youth. And you know what you're going to do? You can wait till you're older and you, know, you will always look back and say, I wish I would have started younger. I wish I would have given him more at a younger age. I wish I would have given time in my youth. Here these men are standing before the king of Babylon. Here he is. Telling them, you will bow before me. You will bow before my golden image that I have set up. You will do as I say or you will suffer the consequences. You know, uh, there'll be some people who lie to you and tell you that being saved and being a Christian is a bed of roses, rainbows, and sunshine. Not all the time it's not. There are some battles that you will go through. And if you go through them alone, you will fail. But you know where their confidence was? It was not in their selves. It is not in their education. But it was in the Lord Jesus Christ. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 16, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Standing before Nebuchadnezzar, there he is. He had told him, if you don't, there will be dire consequences. You'll be in big trouble. You will not like what's coming. And I like it where it says right there, he said they were not careful to answer him in this matter. You know, it took more to deliver them from compromise than it did to deliver them from what uh, they were fixing to face, that burning, fiery furnace. And you know, the devil is a master of the game. Let's make a deal. He may not slide you all the way out of church in one sitting. He may not get you all the way out uh, overnight, but he'll say if you'll compromise here, if you'll compromise your Bible, if you'll compromise your prayer life, if you'll compromise your standards one by one, a little at a time, he'll say, I'll make life easy on you. Eventually, you can be a Christian and go to church and nobody will even know. What good is that? We are the salt of the earth. Is that not what the Bible says? What, what good is the salt if it has lost its savor? The devil has always played, let's make a deal, starting in the Garden of Eden. The Lord doesn't want you to have this taste and see, try. Young people, he will always offer you something that will seem better than what God has to offer you. But I'm here to tell you it is a lie. It is the trap of him. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they all come with scars. They all come with consequences. They all come with nightmares and regrets and saying to yourself, I wish I would have never done that. I wish that I would have done what was right when I had the opportunity. Because once you open a door into sin, it is hard to get that back shut. You ask anybody that's ever been an addict, you ask anybody who has ever opened their life to sin, they'd tell you it'd been so much easier if I would have never started in the first place. There is nothing worth selling your walk with God out over. There is nothing worth selling your spiritual life over. Young people, listen to me, elder alike. There is nothing worth your relationship with the Lord. These men knew that and they were determined in their mind. You know when you start messing up is when you start questioning. You start questioning whether it's worth it or not. These men knew in their heart 
that it would be better for me to die than it would be for me to compromise. You would be so much better off like these men. They did not compromise. They did not give in. And in this day and hour, we don't need any more compromising. Amen. Amen. It's all around us. It's in the independent Baptist. It's in the, it's in the southern Baptist. It's everywhere around you. You look and you see compromise on every hand. Sad day that we live, but praise God. God has always provided a generation, and he will until he comes again. What did he say? He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Amen. There they were, standing before him. They knew these things. They knew that God was able to deliver them out of the judgment of the king. Now, who believes that God can deliver them out of the wrath of Satan, out of the wrath of the devil, out of the things of the world? God can deliver you from anything, can he not? Amen. Yes, he can. He is able. There is nothing that God cannot do. Well, I take that back. God cannot sin. There is nothing that he is unable to do. He said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Three words in the next, next verse, verse number 18. It says, but if not. Those are three strong words. Those are words of faith. Those are words of determination. It says, it, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Are you determined in your mind? Are you determined uh, in your heart? Are you settled in your spirituality that God can deliver you? But even if he does not, do you still have the faith to say what these young men said? Be it known thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods. Boy, it's just like uh, the devil. If you don't compromise, if you don't fit in, you're going to have some hard roads to face. You're going to have some battles to fight. But boy, it is worth it all in the end. It says in verse number 19, it says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men uh, that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hose, and their hats, and other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace." Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Well, that's not good. That's not a happy ending, is it? They're here. King was angry. I mean, he, he was mad. He said the form of his vestige was changed. Anybody ever watch Looney Tunes? <laughs> hey, man, somebody has. What happened when some of them bad characters get mad, their face turn purple, their eyes pop out about three inches, steam come out their ears? I mean, that's what I imagined. I mean, that's a strong word. His vestige was changed. I mean, he was mad. <laughs> I can't help but see that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. He was hot. He said, all right, you will not. Is that, is that what you've got to say to me? Heat the furnace seven times hotter than it's to be heated. Pour down the wrath. Make the fire hot. We are going to put them through something they've never been put through before. His mighty men grabbed them as fast as they could. There they went. And you know, there in that verse 23, it says, they fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery Furnace. Boy, they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. When it seems, though, in life, in one's Christian life, that 
You seem like you're bound. There's nothing you can do. And into the fire you go to fall down into the midst of the worst thing that you've ever been through in your life. I promise this was a tragic day in their lives as looking from the outside in. I mean, it was over. It looked like life was fixing to be at its end. There's no way they were going to be able to make it through this. There was no physical way that they were going to make it through this. But praise God. Verse number 20. It says, And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Boy, what they were most afraid of, what it seemed like they were was going to destroy them, you know what it did? It was what set their bonds free. It was what freed them from their uh, being bound. They were afraid of dying. That time had come. They trusted in the Lord, and he delivered them out. I can see it now. Amen. Thought he'd had his way. Thought he'd won the battle. Thought that he'd snuffed out these pestilence of Christians that he had brought into his kingdom. Boy, that... That angry, mad man, they go back to Looney Tunes again, with his eyes popped out and steam coming out of his ears. Then you flip over and when Tom McCat gets scared, he turns pale as a ghost and slides down in his chair. <laughs> See him looking. Can you imagine what was running through his mind? It killed all the mighty men that just threw it in. They just got near it and it slew his mightiest men in his army. But yet, he said, did we not put three in there? I see somebody else. The fourth is like unto the Son of God. You know that when they went through the fire, when they in the worst place of their life, that was the time that they were closest to the Lord. That is the closest to God they had ever been. And when the devil puts something in your life and God allows something like that for you to go through, it is not to hurt you. It is not to destroy you, but it is to make you better. You don't know. You might come out of there closer than you went in. Amen. Praise the Lord. He meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Praise the Lord. Hanson yes. said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Boy, I don't know how people make it through life lost. I don't know how people make it through tragic things without the Lord in their life. Praise God. If you have the Lord, it's not going to be us that makes it through things. I myself, I am weak, but boy, I'm glad that he is strong. Praise the Lord. If you go through things like this in your life and you have the Lord with you, if you were saved by the grace of God, praise the Lord, you are not going through it alone. They were not in there by themselves, but they were accompanied by the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes and governors and captains and kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was any hair of their hair singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Man, how about that? It didn't even smell like smoke. Uh, feel better than most Baptists. <laughs> oh, that was a joke. I just don't. Don't nobody get mad at me. <laughs> None of these smell of fire had passed on them. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. What about that? Boy, that was a quick change, wasn't it? Did they change the king's mind by themselves? No, they did not. You know who changed the king's mind? The Lord did. But you know what? who the Lord used? 
Hey, you Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How about that? Boy, I and myself am nothing but a rotten sinner saved by grace. It's not about me. All I am is a body. But boy, it is the Lord in us. The Lord works through us. He works through you. We are his temple. He used them. God doesn't have to use us, but he chooses to. Praise the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? The Lord changed his heart so fast. And what would have happened if they would have compromised? It would just been another face in the crowd. They would have been like all the rest of the children of God at that time. They weren't the only three children of Israel there. Amen. But they, you know what set them apart from all the rest of the children of God? They made a stand for what they knew was right. Amen. You know what makes us different from the rest of the world? What makes you different from the rest of church members? What makes you different from the rest of Christians? Is your determination to say, I will not bow and I will not give in. More, we need more people like that, I'm telling you. I, I realize it more and more every day. Both my grandparents have just uh, passed away. I no longer have any grandparents. And it opened my eyes. They would not compromise to the day that they died. They stood with the truth. Young people, I don't have to ask you. You know. You know who's real and you know who's fake. You know who has a touch of God on their life. Any of you do. You can tell. People like that is what makes a difference, not only in the lives of lost people, but in the lives of the children of God, is those that will not bow. Those that will not give in, those that will not compromise what they know is right. Amen. We could spend all night long preaching on different types of compromise and what is compromise and what have we compromised. But you know what is right and what is wrong. You've been preached to. You're, you've got a man of God that preaches to you service after service. You know what is right and you know what is wrong. And you know who's going to be the one to have to do something about it. You and me as individuals. Don't look around at everybody else and worry about what they're doing. You start with one person, yourself. And man, look at the rewards that God reaped through their lives. Hey man, he changed the heart of the king. He changed it from he hated God, you're going to bow to my image that nobody shall speak anything of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they will worship their God freely. There is more respect for somebody that believes and that stands for something that they believe in than somebody that blends in with the crowd everywhere that they go. Therefore, in verse 29, Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speaketh anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow. How about that? Hey Amen. That's a little bit better than where we left off in verse 23, isn't it? Into the fire they go, but boy, God set them up at the top. They sacrificed, they stood, and they were rewarded. Will you say the picture in this is? They were pilgrims, strangers, and foreigners in the land that they were in. They were captive. But they, stu they stood for the Lord and they made a difference while they were there. And after they went through the fire, after they went through the trial, what happened? They were rewarded and they were set up in the kingdom. Child of God, this world's not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. Our, our, best, our best life is not this earthly life. Our hope is not in this world and the pleasures and the riches of this. But boy, we've got a hope that we are pilgrims passing through. And what's going to happen once we get out of these trials and out of these uh, torments that we go through? What, what we got to look forward to? Being promoted and set on high with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, what was the message tonight? What are you saying? Saying that just to these men in the days of old did not surrender what they believed. 
Now more than ever is it more important that we in the last days not surrender what we believe as a body of Christ. Amen. Young people, don't you compromise. Don't you give in to this world. Don't you give in to those around you. You stand firm in what you know is right. The Lord will reward you. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Elder saint of God, will you be there? Will you take the time to train and to show those younger and below you the right way to walk in? Will you take time to teach them to pray and to worship God and to support their preacher? Amen. Do not compromise in these last days.